Hi, let's go beyond our planet. This is basically my favorite object at home. I think many people throughout centuries and throughout history have thought beyond what, uh, what it looks like uh, on other planets or other worlds. And we have had a lot of imaginations. I'm one of those who believe that we have to think beyond our current place. And um, it's smarter to do so because 200 years ago, nobody thought that we could be uh, traveling at a speed faster than a horse speed. And as you know today, the reality. And when I was in school, high school for 25 years ago, I couldn't have imagined that we would have the fintech, we would have the technology, in the IT that we have to actually have today. And uh, many other things that def I couldn't imagine happen. So the same thing happens here. As a skydiver, a physicist, gravitational physicist, I do believe that we have to think beyond uh, the Earth right now. And uh, I know I'm one of the Elon Musk fans, uh, so I, I like to you know, have a lot of fantasy about Mars. Uh, so what, what I'm going to say today to you guys is about skydiving, parachuting on or at Mars, depending on how you want to put it into the context. And it's going to be from the basic conceptual physics point of view. Um, basic in the sense that I will not go into a lot of technical details or further um, you know, advanced physics equations and all that. Conceptual, because I want to talk about the concept rather than full or precise technical details and numbers and all that. But I think you will get an idea of what I'm trying to say. And if you don't like mathematics and you never studied physics and never want to hear about it, leave this after about one minute because I'm going to tell you the most important thing um, here and then the rest of this will be equations but not too bad actually I will talk mostly also about what could be done at the end I will offer what I think could be suggestions or could be scenarios if skydiving or parachuting would one day become a reality on Mars which I'm sure that it could because it's not a fundamental physics problem it's an engineering physics problem so VT is a terminal velocity. There are millions and millions of uh, skydivers all over the world. I myself have jumped in seven countries, almost a thousand jumps. So I know that it's about the same process, same procedures, and everybody who jumps um, knows how happy you become when you have jumped or you know in the process of jumping and all that. And there's a concept of terminal velocity or rather terminal speed, um, which is given by this equation square root of 2 mg divided by rho cda m is your mass in kilograms because we try to do this in physics you can convert from pounds and stones and all that g is basically the earth um, uh, gravity is an acceleration due to gravity on earth which is roughly 9.8 meter per second square on mars would be differently and remember this your teachers were wrong if they told you that is a constant it's never a constant anywhere on earth not not even if you move 10 meters from where you're standing, right? But we can say it's 9.8 roughly. In Sweden, we say 9.82, but it's 9.8 if you actually study um, geology and all that, and then the rest is modif modification depending on where you are on Earth. But let me wrap up. Rho is the air density, which is also not a constant. It's very sensitive to temperatures. So when it's cold, you have um, denser air, and it's actually more, um, lift generates because of this and cd is the drag coefficient so you know a ferrari it had it had to be sharp up front uh, and all the sport cars supercars and all that uh, because you need to penetrate you need to have more streamline and a is actually the frontal area cross-sectional area that means the the air on the medium so uh, we have a lot of air on this planet on mars as far as we know and hopefully everything is correct is about one percent of the earth's atmosphere when it comes to density and all that. So we actually can kind of approximate. It will not be perfect, but let's approximate. So this is the air density for Earth, 1.2, let's say 1.3 kilogram per cubic meter. And on Mars would be something that is simple. You just multiply by 10 to a minus two kilograms per cubic uh, meter. Um, so we're going to use these numbers, but what I'm going to try to say before you go for those who don't like mathematics that you cannot really influence this so much. G, you can't do so much either once you're on Mars, but what you can do, uh, what you definitely can do is this thing. 
the two variables. So I would tell you that on Earth, you would have a terminal velocity in the excess of 200 kilometers an hour uh, on Earth. On Mars, it would be six times. I have done the math, and actually you can easily do the math too. You would be in excess of 1,200 kilometer an hour when it comes to a terminal velocity. So your options, there are, there are quite many options, but let's talk about a parachute like I have on my tie. Um, you can try to create an, a form and the shape that increase in drag co coefficient and A in the side of parachute, basically the, the under side or the under of the parachute. And uh, that means that it had to be bigger, very big. Um, so, uh, you know, I try, to, I try to tell you the concepts. So I'm not going to go into a lot of details even after, you know, you guys who don't like math have left this video. But you see the problem directly. There's no chance that you can slow that down because once we open a parachute, we slow down to, you know, in a good uh, 30 plus kilometer an hour. And, you know, with the Ram Air rectangular parachute that we all jump with, um, you can break, you, you can flare and all that. So basically the landing will be quite soft. It can be hard sometimes, especially when you have no wind and all that. In a row canopy, the military ones, yeah, it's a little bit harder, but you know, you can survive the impact by holding your legs tight and everything that you've learned in your skydive course. But this one, there's no chance. If you try to slow down with the same process, you will probably at best come down to maybe 190 kilometers an hour, still a free fall speed that we have on Earth. So you have to slow that down more and Basically, you have to modify the parachute, bigger parachute, but too big wouldn't work. Wouldn't be practical to pack and everything. But again, we talk about the world in the next 100 or 150 years. So maybe anything is possible. Um, you know, those days uh, haven't come yet. But um, let's talk about what could happen theoretically. You may need a retro retrograde rocket to slow it out, just like the Mars spacecraft you know, um, Perseverance that's gonna land next week and um, sp uh, all the other opportunity, spirit, curiosity, uh, etc. And the Chinese one will also use a parachute uh, to slow down supersonically uh, to um, a, a decent, good enough uh, speed in which retro rockets would come into play. So you can go now if you don't wanna hear more about this, but let's say that you, um, you're interested in seeing this equation in details and further details. It actually comes from an ana analysis that is pretty easy. Uh, once you have done high school physics or uh, you are still studying physics, um, because you're gonna come across this. You know that Newton's second law, sigma F equals ma, basically did all this, the sum of all forces will be equal to the mass um, total mass and acceleration of the system. We know that falling through, uh, you know, air, and that would also mean uh, on Mars. Imagine this were Mars. So the atmosphere of Mars, it defined up to 50 kilometers. That's quite high actually. Um, but of course, it's much thinner than the atmosphere on Earth. So 100 times less, according to this approximation. So you will have uh, two forces. Um, on the moon, this wouldn't happen, but you will have the, the weight, which is basically mg for a, an object uh, of mass m kilograms. And um, then um, you have the drag. I usually write d, but sometimes I write f d. And uh, it's, it's pretty easy to put that in. And now I try to have velocity, which is positive on the graph and all that. So I write mg basically minus the, the fd, the drag, um, which is basically the air resistance. And this one is given by rho cda v squared divided by 2 equal ma. So what happened is that you have Newton's second law um, applied here. And uh, in order to solve it, and we want to know, uh, you know uh, how velocity increase it with time, how fast it would go in the very beginning until it reaches so-called terminal velocity that we mentioned. So uh, the easiest way to basically 
divide by m, so you get it of m from all the terms, and a, according to uh, Newton's mechanics, is dv dt, the derivative of uh, v with respect to time. And then rearrange everything a little bit, uh, because you want a v and v to be on the same, yeah, basically same place. So what I do now is that I pull out, I factorize g, that would be this, and then rearranging it would be dv divided by this parenthesis, rho c d a v square divided by 2 m g equals, um, that would be uh, uh, g dt. And this thing looks a little bit complicated, it looks too messy, so we let it be alpha squared, so dv divided by 1 means alpha square v square g dt. And then you integrate from 0 to v, and you rename this to prime 0 to t. You know, you will get t as a function of v, and then you can convert so that you get v as a function of t. And v as a function of t looks something like this. I have to take away um, this a little bit. Um, just do some math. It's not that difficult. So v as a function of t would be basically what we wrote before. Uh, v uh, t, terminal velocity, divided by rho c d a, and then hyperbolic tan, which look like this. And this is basically the same factor right there. If you are plotting program, just plot it. It's pretty easy. You will see that v t as a function of t would look like this. And it, it will approach very fast, um, and you can actually compute that too. Um, experimentally, it's easy to do. Just go to a skydive club and have all the instruments, and just jam out and see when you reach your terminal velocity. So the terminal velocity is basically this. So what happens is that when you let um, t go to infinity, you will have, uh, ooh, this one would be, T sub v sub t, terminal velocity. So when that thing goes to infinity, it will approach 1. So you will have that as a terminal velocity, which I basically marked right there, underlined right there. So now that we have it, we have to think about the practical and the kind of conceptual part of skydiving. So when you jump, um, you want to have, have a little free fall. You know that not having free fall, isn't that fun? But some people, for some people, it's necessary. If you jump very low, base jumping and all that, which is a kind of parachute jumping, but it's not really skydiving as a sport that that is well defined or is kind of agreed upon with rules and laws and all that. Um, so you jump from a certain height and you reach terminal velocity on on the Earth. Um, let's say after ten seconds, eight, ten seconds, or up to fifteen, depending a little bit on your shape and your form and your your mass as well, as we see here. M plays a role, A as well. So if you are like those who, who can stand, like the head up, they call it, or head down, uh, or those who do so-called speed skydiving, they're not gonna reach um, terminal velocity um, as fast as the others uh, that jump out like this, with the um, legs spread, especially if they have a huge um, suit and all that. And the second thing is also the temperature, which plays a role when you um, compute with rho or uh, air density. It can be as low as 1.1 when you are at minus 30 or something. But uh, I don't think you feel the difference when you do in a free fall. I think you do feel when you fly your canopy or fly your parachute when it's very cold. I did jump when it was minus 10 once and I felt that the flying characteristic of my parachute was very different than when I jumped when it was 30 Celsius. Anyway, um, let's get back to this. So the practical thing to solve on Mars, if you want to do parachuting, and I, I would suggest the following. We, uh, we say that all these things are never, never constant, but let's stick to something anyway. We stick to this and stick to this for our calculation. So it gets a bit simplified. And uh, let's write it down here one more time for uh, the Earth. 2mg, and I would write it like this, for the Earth, ge rho e c d a, okay? 
um, we're going to try to see that when, once you actually modify the equation uh, for planet Mars, it will be about six times faster than the terminal speed on the Earth, no matter your mass and, and all that and, and the form. So let's take away this. Uh, what happens is that this thing will not ch change. Neither this or this, because you jump and we stick to the same, uh, you know, position and uh, shape and all that. So let's compute this for Mars. Terminal velocity on Mars would be um, square root of 2 and your mass remain the same. But G on the Earth and Mars are different and it turns out that if you actually write as a, as a factor, it will be the following. G on Mars would be 3 point, 0 0.38 g on the earth so it's uh, only 38 percent of earth's gravity you will feel lighter if you walk on mars and you can easily jump but you will be heavier due to your mars suit so this will be 0 0.38 g on the earth and then rho on mars would be 0 0.01 of g on uh, sorry rho on the earth and then the rest is the same given that we are in the same um, you know position and, and everything then do the math again this factor will come out as 0 0.38 divided by 0 0.01 and the thing that you have left is actually terminal velocity on the earth and now a simple math you can do um, on your mobile phone will be a, the following uh, terminal velocity on Mars or at Mars would be roughly 6.112, let's say 6 times the terminal velocity on the Earth. Given that you jump from a decent height, a height that you can reach terminal velocity, but let's not get into the details of that. I know that if you jump from uh, 300 meters, that's not a lot of time left, but from 1,500 meters and onwards, you have plenty of time. So what, what do we have left if we want to do skydiving and put parachuting on Mars? Looking at this equation, um, and now we can take away the superscript E. You have two choices, because you can't change that. You can't change that. This is something in Mars we throw at you. And this will be hard to change. You can choose certain day when you, when you think it's cold enough, and it's not too cold, because the temperature on Mars varies a lot from day to night and from you know, season to season. But we pick a certain day. It doesn't matter, maybe it's minus 10, minus 15. Celsius is rather this. So you will have to find a parachute that have a, a very high CD. And I know that a round parachute, and this is according to Glenn Research Center or lab at NASA, um, you have a round parachute that had a CD of uh, in the excess of 1.75, something like that, roughly, maybe. And A should be much larger. On the Earth, if you jump with 100, 90 square feet or let's say for somebody that have a total exit weight of 80 kilos 85 kilos then uh, that's quite an okay um, size of, for a parachute soft enough for most cases and for for amateurs that is the very important thing for pros and those who have done thousands of jumps and want to land very fast that would be too slow for them but let's stick to to this um, so we, we we cannot jump with the same parachute size cannot be size on the earth wouldn't work on mars it will not slow you down enough so my suggestion is that we actually need to bring the technology that we have today in 2020 21 uh, to something that may not happen until 2100 or 2150 if we will settle on mars and hopefully everything will be peaceful until then though um, is that you have to have multi-parachute system i would call that uh, multi-stage parachute uh, because you cannot pull one parachute and hope everything will be okay you can slow down from 1200 kilometers an hour which is your terminal velocity on mars to maybe 200 kilometers an hour and then you release that one new one comes up and slow you down to maybe 50 kilometers an hour which is very very fast but since it's a uh, the second one will be ram air rectangular then you actually can land with it with some technique and who knows up to that day, we may have a better understanding of Mars' atmosphere. 
and that would actually be a safety feature. Or you also have a jetpack just in case, it won't be slow enough. But let's hope that um, the atmosphere on Mars is homogeneous. We know it, but we don't know it super, super well as we know everything on Earth. But hopefully SpaceX and you know, NASA, the Chinese, uh, UAE, the Russian, all the other agencies 